Here I am. It feels a little different. Like I've been asleep for a bit longer. Like the world has changed just a little since I last came in here. To this castle. And every time I come to it, I find myself flying out of it somehow. Exploring new worlds within and without it so often that I wonder why exactly I decided to focus on a castle, this incarnation, in the first place. Ironic, really, since I did away with my form, and yet I still became obsessed with form anyhow. The form that I am within. This castle. This fortress full of me, and all of you, and all that we hold, and all that we are held in. At the end of the day, am I not doing exactly the same thing I was doing with my changeable self? I wonder. No matter where I am, I am here. Here. I am. Ah, uh, hush, though. I think someone is coming. I think a ghost is approaching. Do you hear them? Wondering and wandering. In the halls we can't see, for we don't have our candles lit. Not just yet. Because if we cannot see the walls, perhaps we can pretend they are not there. If we cannot see these walls, do they really contain us? Shh. Here they are. Is the castle where you want to be? Interesting. 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 No. The castle is here, and I am here. Wherever I go, it will be. It will change. It will grow. It will threaten and cajole and hold and strike. Characters will rise and fall away into shadow. Shadows will overtake light, and light will overtake the darkness, and the seas will rise and flood the dungeons and release the prisoners and wash the monsters of their sins. Here is where I am. But let me ask you a question, dear ghost. Who are you asking? Are you asking me, your formless narrator, your distinguished yet undistinguishable host, your friend in your ears? Or are you asking me, your funny little writer, your friend in her funny little tower with her funny little laptop and microphone, your friend at the keys? As your narrator... I cannot wish to be here. I am here. So I think you are asking the funny little human, the creature with the glasses and the typing fingers, etc. So, what do you think, Kristen? Well, sure. I would like to be in a magical castle, but that's not what this is. Maybe I can demonstrate.
close your eyes, or if you cannot, allow yourself to visualize in your heart a circle, black and spinning, a void in emptiness. Though it is in your heart, it is also in your eyes too. Just breathe and look for it. See it swirling. See it growing. Do not be afraid as it grows larger and larger, soon taking up your chest, your arms, your legs, then swallowing up your neck, your mouth, your nose your eyes, then finally the top of your head, swallowed up all of it in this darkness, this endlessness, but there is a part of you that knows this, the part of you that sees yourself getting eaten up by this monstrous vortex. What part is that? The space grows larger, beyond the size of your body. Just because it is dark and empty does not mean it is evil. Bear with me, please. If you can allow that darkness and emptiness into your mind's eye such that everything else, every minuscule thought, or worry, or detail, or sight before your eyes, floats as though on a television screen before the darkness. And you know that if you wanted to turn off the screen, it could all go away, and you could be in pure, perfect darkness. You're not gone, you are here. You are alive and breathing, though you cannot see how, right now. Remember to breathe. Remember your form, yourself, somewhere else, right here, actually. It's just that all that is not so terribly important. It's quite small. You'll see why, I hope. Maybe I can try and show you how I feel. Join me in the pure, perfect darkness for a moment. For it is where we will begin our story. Not quite right somehow, not yet. Well, it's time to wake it up nonetheless. I wanted to have big, beautiful white wings and golden eyes. I wanted to sing beautifully and have a gentle laugh. I wanted to say please and thank you and good morning and good evening. Shh. It's waking up. It's waking up. Shh. Everyone, shh. Open your eyes, my friend. We are not alone. All around us there are mirrors. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I can't get past them, I'm afraid. Each as tall as you, trapping you in a circle. Let's look at one. In this one, I am she with a mouthful of razor fangs and long black claws and the wings of death. Smile painful, and hands grasping, and wings trying so hard to go up, 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 and away. What are you? What do you look like, in your mind, when your worst aches, your longings, desires, hungers, and demands take you over? Do you have fangs? Claws? Wings? What are they reaching for? Refusing to let go of? 
I have the instinct to be afraid, but then in another mirror I am something else. I am peaceful, and green, and calm, and powerful, but almost a pantomime of nobility, I'm afraid. Good vibes only in this mirror, and an exercise in ego to look for the grotesqueries here. The smile too benevolent, the hands too soft. Only mark the dirt on the hands and feet. Not dirt, only ashes. How long can I talk about mirrors for? Will this be the last time? What magic do I need them for now? <clears throat> what are you in this mirror? What do you look like when your most glamorous vision of yourself clouds your sight so badly that you become so separate from everyone else, everyone imperfect, which is everyone, that you feel your hungry and bleeding heart eating you from the inside out? Trembling, I turn to look at another mirror. Where there is a me covered in blood, absolutely dripping with it, my own, after having clawed my way out of my own mouth. Is that what you look like, too? Isn't that what we all look like when we allow ourselves to suffer, rather than feed monsters of desire or judgment? But I fear this one greatly for I do not ever want to bleed like that again. Is that why I tried to shed all form this time? Is that why the castle was built? No. Another mirror, another self. A funny woman in her thirties with glasses and frizzy hair and wearing all black. And whatever it is, you look like right now. Maybe it occasionally turns into what you wished you looked like, what you think your friends must see, what you think your family wants to see, what you think your employer might see. But that is a you in a small place, a specific place we know well. But please understand, a small place Nonetheless, which is true? Which one are you? I look down at myself and see nothing but blessed, peaceful space, and I feel that there is nothing there suddenly, and despite that knowledge, my heart pounds in my chest as that is just so scary. Out of fear, I lose my composure. I don't know if anyone is holding these mirrors, but I scream so loud that they shatter into dozens of sharp, shining points. Dozens of images of myself, and of yourself for you, most likely if you are still with me, which it is absolutely okay if you are not. They fly around my vision and disappear and scream back at me, reflections and yet not, fangs and bloody maw and human teeth, all bared. It feels as though we are launched into the sky, but there is no sky, just that emptiness, for a moment only until we land lightly on something soft and warm. And a soft and warm orange light appears. It is a horizon. The ripples of the sea rise to greet the dawn. Always I will sing the praises of a sunrise or a sunset. Because, my God, what else is there to want? 
and you see that we are on a beach. The tides roll in. They caress the shore. They fall back. They roll in. Rise up. Fall back. In. Hold. Out. In. Hold. Out. I had a thought while sitting on a beach once. I was so sad. It was so beautiful and so warm and such a sweet moment. But I knew it would be over soon and I wasn't sure what to do about that. I couldn't enjoy the beauty because I knew it would be taken from me. But suddenly, I realized... The seaside is not beautiful because of my physical body's presence upon it. It is not peaceful because two eyes were there to witness it. It is not majestic because of two feet walking the length of it. It just is. This place and I are not two things that will sometimes collide into each other. This is a place that is sometimes close to me, and sometimes far from me, but that is it. I am here. What a miracle that I am here. Not my body on the beach in that point of time. There is no point of time and I am not just my body. The sand I sit upon, the air I breathe, the birds flying overhead, the water rolling in and out and in and out. That is what I am. Take now, for example. It is no matter that we are two friends sitting together on an imaginary beach at dawn. It is nice, though. You can be this place. You can be any place. Understand what I mean when I say that I am here. Look up. Past the clouds and just beyond the blue sky, there is stone. There are cloth tapestries. There is a ceiling. There's the castle. Hold the beach in your heart if you like as it rolls away into darkness and we find ourselves in the dark halls once more. I am the castle. In ever-changing form with its own kinds of beauty and its own kinds of horror. A form that does not decide whether it is inside or outside for it is and isn't anyway. A place that already has everything I could ever want or need, tucked away and waiting for me to come find it. You're it too, by the way. I don't know if it's what you expected, but here we are, 
at the dawn of a new year. Not that that means anything other than we are here. And that's, well, it's pretty cool. Good night, my friends. Hello, my friends, and a very happy new year to each and every one of you. This is Kristen Zaza, your host, writer, narrator, composer, podcaster, etc., behind On a Dark Cold Night. Welcome to 2023. I'm looking forward to finding a rhythm in life again, hopefully releasing episodes on a more consistent weekly basis again, and with some extra goodies for you as well, but more on that soon. First... Take a deep breath, relax your shoulders and jaw and eyes and face and heart and whatever else. We made it to 2023. Maybe instead of dwelling on resolutions and ideas of who we think a future version of ourself should be, let's revel in a little bit of pride that this you made it here today. And isn't that already victory over a new year? I think it is. Congratulations. Happy New Year. (laughs) Sending thanks to my question asker. The question of, is the castle where I want to be? Was asked some time ago by patron and supporter Keir Bo, Pink Opal Magic on Instagram. And I finally thought I'd like to try my hand at answering it. So thank you so much for the thoughtful question, Keir. I would like to also thank a new Patreon supporter who pledged a monthly amount in support of what I do. Big thank you to Roland Dubois. I really appreciate it, my friend. Speaking of Patreon, things were busy over the holidays, but I did want to release that little mini-episode called A Quick Moment, and this is actually something I'm going to start doing more frequently for Patreon subscribers at the $5 amount, once a week, in fact. I'm going to release a shorter episode, perhaps between 5 and 10 minutes, every Thursday, that focuses on breath, mindfulness, meditation, and relaxation. That's not to say it won't be entirely not creepy, but it is something I want to start putting out there. This will be available for all Patreon supporters of $5 a month or more, US. Just make sure that you pledge under the Kindred Spirit tier to access these rewards. So starting this week, Kindred Spirit patrons of $5 or more a month will have access to those bonus mini meditations, uh, quick moments I'm calling them, as well as to a monthly tarot reading video that I upload every full moon. We just had one last week, actually. And as always, for the patron tier called Your Narrator's Friend, which is for anyone who pledges $1 or more a month, U.S., you can have access to the complete soundtrack of the show. And the soundtrack perk is also available to uh, the Kindred Spirit tier as well. So basically, anything $1 or more, you get the soundtrack. You get what I'm saying. (laughs) If you're interested in supporting the show at either of these levels, visit patreon.com slash darkcoldnight. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash darkcoldnight. And thanks again to Roland Dubois for joining my patron circle. If you'd prefer to donate one time without any perks, you can always do so at coffee.com. That's ko-fi.com slash darkcoldnight. And I also have t-shirts and hoodies for purchase at bonfire.com slash on-a-dark-cold-night. It would also be fantastic if you left me a rating and a review on iTunes, Spotify, Facebook, or wherever else you like to rate and review podcasts. You can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter at A Dark Cold Night, Instagram at Dark Cold Night Podcast, on Facebook and YouTube under page names on A Dark Cold Night, and on TikTok at Kristen Zaza. These, as well as Patreon or Coffee, are great ways to send me a question, like Kirbo did. 
If you'd like to hear your narrator answer a question in an upcoming episode, just send it over to me however you prefer to do so, and you might hear it in a story soon. Thank you again for listening and joining me in this new year. Wishing you joy and happiness, regardless of resolutions or goals or destinations. Wishing you peace and calm, even in the face of chaos and discord. Wishing you all the best. Good night, and talk soon. This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar.